Hi guys, Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is another episode of You Do Not Need That. The video series where I help to talk you out of buying tempting new makeup products if you are on a no buy, if you're on a low buy, if you're trying to cut back on makeup spending, you're trying to be good, you're trying to save money for whatever reason you want to avoid makeup FOMO and buy these products, this is the video for you. I'm here to help. So first up, let's talk about this new Gucci eyeshadow palette. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about this. The packaging looks stunning and the color story is super pretty. I feel like they're playing on all of our like summer joyful emotions with this. They're trying to get us right in the summer feels. Here, look, flowers, summery colors. Don't you want to buy me? That's what's going on here. Now, here's the thing. This is very expensive, this eyeshadow palette. This is 145 pounds. Mm. Now I will cut a deal with you, okay? Here's the deal I'm going to make. If you can find me three rave reviews of the previous Gucci eyeshadow palette in which people say it's amazing, it's worth every penny, I'll let you have this one. I promise you, you can't. The previous palette, the previous eyeshadow palette from Gucci was a big fat flop. Nobody liked it. The general consensus on their first palette was that this was all style, no substance, with a big Gucci name on it, and that was really all you were going to get for that £145. A very expensive Gucci ornament that did not have the luxurious feel and quality that you would expect, and the eyeshadows were lacking. Although this is a cute, pretty colour story, it's not anything you don't already have, and for £145, I would beg you to save 20 or more pounds on a Pat McGrath palette which would be far better quality and I'd say Mothership One would essentially be this colour story covered so if you already have that one you basically have this in a far far more exciting formula and if you wait for a Pat McGrath sale you could literally get it at half the price of this Gucci one that literally just looks beautiful from afar as long as you don't pick it up or try to use it and then <laughs> you'll be disappointed so don't even think about this one. Next up, let's talk about this slightly unexpected release from Anastasia Beverly Hill. They are coming out with a conditioning brow serum now. Here's the thing, I looked at the ingredients for this. This claims to be conditioning, help your brow hairs grow, and give you fuller looking brows. Now for those of us who lived through the 90s, this sounds like it might be the answer to all of our prayers, but when you look at the ingredients, one of these is castor oil, which is what I use on my brows now to condition them. And I got a ginormous, like 500 mils of that from the health food shop for like two pounds. Okay, it's gonna last me the rest of my life. It's what my brow technician recommends to me. And you'd be much better off just buying a huge big castor oil and you can use it for the rest of your life. I feel like the rest of this is really going to be all promises, no deliverance. Don't fall for it. Definitely give the castor oil a try first. What this isn't going to do is like create a totally different looking brow to the one that you did now. If you plucked every hair out of your life during the 90s or during any time, I don't know if people did it outside of the 90s or if it was an isolated event. I just know that that's when I did it. And I went for the M, the McDonald's brow. Don't know about you, that's what we were doing, where I was from. But this isn't going to give you new growth. It's only going to, if anything, if it does anything at all, it's only going to like condition what you're already working with. And did you know that you can use your hair conditioner on your brows? That's another tip that my brow tech gave me. So either just use the conditioner that you've been using on the rest of your hair, or use some good old castor oil that you know we know we can rely on. You can get a whole bucket full for about a tenth of the price of what this is gonna cost us. Next up, let's talk about this Too Faced Ethereal Light Concealer. Here's the thing about this. I don't, I can't trust Too Faced anymore. They've let me down a good few times. There have been some questionable performances from that brand. Things have been slipping for a while. How I envision this concealer going and I could be wrong, I'll say it now. I, c I could be, it's happened before, many times. I expect this concealer to be a less 
good version of NARS's Radiant Creamy. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like a sort of natural medium coverage with like some light reflecting qualities to it. We already had this concealer for about 10 years. There's been numerous concealers that are along this same vein from brands that haven't been bringing out the exact same eyeshadow palette in a rapidly declining formula for the last 10 years. So forgive me if I am wrong and this is an incredible concealer, but I, I really don't think this is gonna be the answer to all our under eye problems. That's what I'm saying. This is not going to like cover up our lines and wrinkles and everything that we did in the first half of our life that we have serious regrets and concerns in some cases over now. It's not gonna hide the lack of of sleep that we've had for the last eight years I mean that's just the age of my children but you know adjust it for when the first of yours was born it's going to be an average probably pretty useless concealer in my mind's eye I see being a creasy horrible mess and a really bad version of NARS's light reflecting which you probably already tried or you may even own already so why would you need a rubbish version of it is what I ask you Next, let's talk about these Dior Fall eyeshadow palettes. So Dior came out with, was it two? I think it was two, eyeshadow quince. And yes, I do love saying quince, but that's the only thing I love about these two. Here's what's going on here. The extra Dior embossing on there is not fooling me. Okay, that's literally the only exciting thing about these. Very overdone, repetitive, quince <laughs> can't stop saying it okay there's essentially a warm toned one and an autumnal tones one so they've just tried to suck us in with our excitement for autumn to arrive and you know autumn's coming look at these colors they remind me of autumn but you definitely have 400 of these color stories even if you're telling yourself oh that one's got a green i know if you're like me you're a green person you're a green fat not that you're colored in green you understand you like greens is what I'm saying I love green as soon as I see a green in an eyeshadow I'm all in I get excited I think oh my goodness this is going to be the green this isn't going to be the green this is a, a very wishy-washy barely green at all shade if you've ever bought a single palette from Natasha Denona the metropolis the gold the mini gold the medium gold is that an option if you've bought any of the Charlotte Tilbury palettes with this exact green in it that is the only color you could even get slightly excited or optimistic about in this whole bunch of 10 there are 10 shades here. The only one that has anything that's even slightly eye-catching about it is that green. And when you think about it, you've already got that green, haven't you? Don't lie to me. So those are an easy pass. Don't get lured in with your excitement for autumn, okay? There's more exciting things right around the corner, I promise you. Also, did you know that there's something really weird going on with the prices here? My friend Tavia messaged me about this, that the price in the UK has gone up and the price on the US website has gone down by like 10 or more dollars. So we're paying like 20 more dollars for these in the UK. So, you know, if that doesn't put you off, if you are in the UK, I don't know what will. I'm not falling for that, no thank you. Next, let's talk about Summer Friday's Sheer Skin Tint. There's two really alarming things for me. Alarm bells, red flags are going off instantly with these two things that are in Trend Moods post. First up, this is their first complexion product. I don't know if that was supposed to be like a selling point, but for me, it's like, oh, wait, but... Um, should they have practiced more? Would I rather go with someone's first complexion product or someone's like 20th? Who, who is likely to have produced, you know, the best one? This is their first one. Seems like it might be an experiment, no? So that initially put me off. I thought first, <laughs> I'm not going to be experimented on. Second of all, this sentence a variety of emollients, including avocado oil, immediately conjured up a slicky slimy horrible mess i don't know if that's a reality whatsoever but a range of emollients is not something that makes me think please yes i want a range of emollients and oils slipping all over my face i don't know about you but that just put me straight off so i thought i'd share those with you in case it has the same effect for you first ever complexion product could be a total could be their last if it goes 
badly. Do you want to be a part of this experiment? And then secondly, a variety of emollients, including avocado oil, which just makes it sound really greasy and slimy to me. But, you know, each to their own. And like I said, I could be wrong, it could be a dream, but just remember, when you think about getting tempted by this, variety of emollients, first ever complexion product. If I were you, I'd highly recommend waiting for reviews as a minimum, just in case it's a slippy mess. Next up, let's talk about Huda Beauty's new collection, the Love Fest collection. Now I feel like most of this for most of us is a pretty easy pass. I think the most tempting thing here would be this Obsessions eyeshadow palette. Here's the thing, this has some like nice vibrant packaging and a nice vibrant colour story. <laughs> this is potentially the most repeated eyeshadow like colour story from a brand I've ever seen. I feel like if you own more than one eyeshadow palette from Huda Beauty, you've probably got two of this colour story already. Is this not the exact same colours that are in every single one of the palettes that that brand has ever released? So even if you really love the brand and love their eyeshadows, well then you definitely don't need another one of these colour stories. We've got it in every palette. 100% this colour story is in the Naughty Nude palette and also in the Mercury Retrograde palette, and I feel like her larger palettes have a better formula than these smaller ones as well. And I even think that there was a previous Obsessions, was it Warm Obsessions or something, that basically is this exact same colour story. Again, I don't know what's happening here, but we've already got this, Huda. I don't know if the message got lost, but we've got this one. So I don't know about you, but I'm not buying another one of it. Okay, you mad? So next up, probably for me at least, the most tempting release of the bunch that we're talking about today. And these are these two new eyeshadow palettes from Tom Ford. So we have the Velours Khaki and the Violet Sateen. These are two new eyeshadow quads from Tom Ford. These are already available for pre-order. So presumably they'll be coming to more places soon. Currently seems to be like in the US, but yeah probably coming everywhere very soon. Here's the thing, I feel like you don't even, we don't even need to talk about the violet one because I don't think many people looked at that and like all their dreams came true. The problematic one of these two is for sure the Velours Khaki. This is for sure because it happened to me, okay? I saw the picture of this and I went, <gasps> And the reason I did that is because we have been begging, crying, pleading Tom Ford, please bring out an eyeshadow palette that is not body heat or called something else but is secretly body heat in a repackaged, slightly different colour component, okay? That's what we've been crying out. Stop giving us body heat in various different disguises, okay? We're sick of it. We don't need it. We either bought it initially or we don't want it, so stop trying to shove it. Stop trying to make body heat happen, Tom. That's what I'm saying to you. Stop trying to make it happen. It ain't gonna happen, okay? We've done it. We've been there. We're not falling for your tricks and we're frankly getting sick of it. So what happened here is that we saw this quad, which one, again, it's the greens. They get us every time. And two, it's just something we haven't seen five million of from Tom Ford before. If you are a Tom Ford lover, I don't mean in like an extramarital sense. I mean, you like and appreciate the eyeshadows from the brand. If you are a Tom Ford aficionado and you just love his eyeshadow and you've got loads of them, you might not have this colour story. And if you, like me, have been waiting for Tom Ford to bring out a quad that actually in any way, shape or form tickles your pickle, we instantly saw this and went, oh, that's it, it's something a bit different, it's a green. If this looks like it might be not body heat. And we all got very, very excited and momentarily lost our marbles. But let's take it back, take a breath, take a pause, reel it back in, I beg of you, and actually see what we're looking at here, okay? What we're looking at here is the typical Tom Ford very soft muted formula of a couple of more muted khaki army greens. That's what we're looking at here. Now, do you not have the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette? The Natasha Denona mini gold palette? 
do you not have, again, Charlotte Tilbury has like these khakis and greens in every palette she's ever brought out. Same thing goes for multiple Sydney Grace palettes. Again, if you have Tiny Marvels, the greatest of all time. If you have the Temptalia collaborations with Sydney Grace, again, these four shades are in there. These are not actually that exciting or that revolutionary or different eyeshadow colors. We just momentarily forgot that we actually already have these shades and probably from brands with at least as good if not better formulas than Tom Ford's eyeshadow. So just remember that, take a breath, have a cooling off period. We've got time because these haven't really been released officially yet, they're still on pre-order only. Really have a look through your eyeshadow collection and ask yourself, did I get really excited about this because it's not something I own or have and I really love this colour story and I don't have anything like it? Or did I get excited because for a moment Tom Ford showed us something that was not body heat and we all lost our minds? Which of those two was it? Because I know which one it was for me. Next up, let's talk about this new House Labs foundation. So House Labs is Lady Gaga's brand. They're coming out with a foundation. The most exciting thing about this so far is it appears to have 50 shades, which is a phenomenal number of shades. Love that for us. We don't seem to have a huge amount of other information about this just yet, but I feel like people are going to get very, very excited and carried away because one, 50 shades. We love to... Wait, what? Your minds are in the gutter. We're talking about 50 colours of foundation, all right? Get your minds out the gutter. I know exactly what you were thinking, you filthy bunch. But that's one reason we all got excited, because we all heard 50 shades and suddenly this foundation sounds very exciting, doesn't it? Maybe it's going to tie us up and... No, sorry. Let's not go there. You were thinking it. Okay, we were all thinking it. And second of all, we all love a bit of Lady Gaga, so her foundation must be amazing. I wouldn't have thought she's come up with this herself. That'd be my first thought. I wouldn't have thought she's had a huge amount to do with the creation and the formulation of the foundation. But again, as always, I could surely be wrong. I think the other temptation here is this packaging, this bottle looks glorious. This frosted glass, very chic, very beautiful, but Here's the thing, House Labs has definitely been a hit or miss brand. It's certainly not been one where like everything they've released has been widely loved and become like holy grail status. There have been some serious fails from the brand and some real wins. So this is 100% a wait for review. Foundations are not limited edition, they're permanent to lines. You can afford to wait, save your money, check out reviews, check whether it's actually going to work for you and your skin type first, watch reviews of people with a similar skin type and preference to yourself, similar age to yourself, similar skin type, and see how this actually works and performs and if it's actually for you before just throwing $45 at it, please, I beg you. This could be one of their successes, it could also be one of their horrific flops. We haven't tried and tested this brand at what they are like with foundation formulas yet. They might be terrible, okay? Give it a minute, please. We're also in the middle of foundation geddon at the moment. There's foundations coming from all different directions. You know, Lancome just brought out a foundation. Hourglass have just brought out a foundation. We're still getting used to the Chanel number one. There's literally been foundations coming out of our ears in the first half of this year. And not just that, but really, really great ones. Just remember those, okay? Pay them a bit more attention before you just start jumping ship you foundation floozy. So there you have it. Hopefully you are now well and truly talked out of all these tempting new and upcoming makeup releases. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise take care for now. Bye 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 bye.